you've seen it before. You're watching a TV show or movie, getting wrapped up in the story, when all of a sudden, one of the characters starts speaking directly to you, the audience. They bought it. This technique is known as breaking the fourth wall. But what exactly is the fourth wall to begin with? Where did it come from? How exactly do you break it? And why do so many creators choose to do it? From Story Screen Presents, this is Diana DeMiro, and we're going to take a look at breaking the fourth wall in TV and film. Dang! The fourth wall actually originated in theater productions during the 1800s. On stage, a box set has three walls. The audience is supposed to imagine that there is a fourth wall separating them from the actors. The fourth wall is the invisible barrier between reality and story. In other words, the characters in a production are not supposed to know that the audience is there. Everybody got that? So what exactly does it mean when we break the fourth wall? Well, that's when the characters in the story start showing their awareness for us, the audience. One of the most used methods for breaking the fourth wall is by having a character speak directly to the camera or the audience. This is a love story. Another way to break the fourth wall is to have a performer completely break character and reference themselves being in a production. I lost. Wait a minute, I'm not supposed to lose. Let me see the script. Okay, so we know what the fourth wall is and how to break it, but why? What are the reasons some writers and directors choose to do it? Let's take a look at a few of the reasons for breaking the fourth wall in TV and film. Number one, exposition. Exposition is a way to explain or give the audience information. This can be background about the story setting or the characters, historical context, you name it. In Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Ferris teaches the viewer early on in the film how to fake out the parents to avoid going to school. The key to faking out the parents is the clammy hands. It's a good non-specific symptom. I'm a big believer in it. Exposition can also be a way to explain the rules. Now, the making of a good compilation tape is a very subtle art, many do's and don'ts. First of all, you're using someone else's poetry to express how you feel. This is a delicate thing. Number two, character development. By breaking the fourth wall, we get a glimpse into the thoughts and feelings of the characters we are watching. It's a lot like reading a character's inner monologue. By choosing to share the character's thoughts and feelings with us, we start to trust and like the character. They bring us in, tell us their secrets. We get to know how upset they are, even if they are trying to play it cool to everyone else. Breaking the fourth wall can often create a deeper connection between the character and the audience. We were both so whatever about that Lily girl. What Lily girl? Number three, audience reaction. Whether it is to draw us closer to the characters, make us laugh, or completely catch us off guard, breaking the fourth wall is a good way to get a reaction from the audience. It can also be really unsettling. Directors have been breaking the fourth wall as a means of satire or to create humor for years. Some of the most popular examples are from the works of Mel Brooks, his use of satire often goes full meta. At the end of Blazing Saddles, Mel Brooks has his cast literally break through a physical wall onto the set of an entirely different movie. Remember how we mentioned one way to break the fourth wall is to have a character reference that they are in a production? Nowhere is this more apparent than in Spaceballs. Here it is, sir. Spaceballs. Good work, Corporal. Punch it up. Directors also frequently use breaking the fourth wall as a way to poke fun at themselves and the film industry itself. In Wayne's world, Wayne always speaks to the audience, telling us his thoughts and feelings. 
excellent. But he takes it even further to poke fun at the idea of selling out and product placement in film. Sorry, you feel that way, but basically it's the nature of the beast. Maybe I'm wrong on this one, but for me, the beast doesn't include selling out. Garth, you know what I'm talking about, right? It's like people only do things because they get paid. And that's just really sad. There are critics out there that discourage the overuse of breaking the fourth wall. By overusing the technique, you risk making it seem ordinary or distracting from the natural flow of the narrative. But in Phoebe Waller-Bridge's series Fleabag, constantly breaking the fourth wall becomes a way for us to gauge Fleabag's emotional state and her connection to others around her. We become her friends, her confidants. I have friends. Oh, so you do have someone to talk to. Yeah. Do you see them a lot? Oh, they're, <laughs> they're always there. They're, they're always there. In season two, Fleabag finally starts to let her personal walls down to a potential love interest played by Andrew Scott. And there are some groundbreaking effects. <laughs> <laughs> He's a bit annoying, actually. What is that? What? That thing that you're doing, it's like you disappear. What? What are you not telling me? Nothing. Tell me what's going on underneath Nothing. there. Nothing. Tell me. Come on, no. you can tell me. Nothing. Ah, Nothing. What are you doing? No, stop being so churchy. I'm not being churchy. I'm just trying to get to know you. Well, I don't want that. The audience, once Fleabag's silent confidant, now starts to question whether, by being let in, are we actually keeping Fleabag from dealing with her own feelings or making a meaningful connection? When Fleabag finally makes some real heartbreaking progress in the series finale, she finally motions for us, the audience, to stay behind. So in conclusion, the fourth wall is that imaginary barrier separating the characters in our favorite stories from the real world. Breaking it is a creative way to get a reaction out of the audience, give us more information and insight into a character, and share their thoughts and feelings with us. When done well, it can make us connect with our characters and each other. I'm Diana DeMiro, and this has been another video from Story Screen Presents. Music